Greetings everyone and welcome to Going Medieval, an early access game that I have been afforded the opportunity to check out ahead of its release. Developed by Foxy Voxel and slated for release on the 1st of June, this is going to be a new first taste for the channel, or perhaps a little bit more. Depending on the interest, of course, if by the end of this video you decide that you like what you saw and you want to see more, then do let me know with a comment or a like on the video itself, and uh, we may be seeing this developer or perhaps blossom into its own little series. Now, what is going medieval? Well, I'm going to get the comparison out of the way initially. I don't know what I'm going to title this video yet, but it, it's probably already going to allude to it. This is effectively what you would get if you took RimWorld, and stone hearth, and a sprinkling, a dash, a, a, you know, just just a just a little uh, few droplets of Nomoria for flavour, and then you blended them all together, and then dished them out as some sort of lavish meal. Not not those peasant meals made of a single ingredient. No, no, you've got a little bit of meat, you've got a little bit of veg. It is absolutely inspired by RimWorld. There is a no denying that you will see RimWorld in this game in all of its mechanics. Everywhere you look, you will see little things that remind you of it. But I will say, as an avid RimWorld player myself, there are a few things that this game actually does better. Now, it is presented in a beautiful 3D... Well, I mean, I say beautiful. I like this art style, but it's it's basically low-poly 3D environment. You have Z-levels, which uh, which is where the kind of uh, stone half kind of tie-in comes from. You are effectively managing a colony of colonists fighting against uh, enemy raiders and indeed against nature itself in some ways. Uh, the game is definitely still in its beta stages. There is a lot of content here, many, many, many hours worth, perhaps too many hours worth, I'll be honest. I decided to boot it up and just have a quick see, and then the sun went down and the sun came back up again, and uh, I honestly... I couldn't have told you uh, or described how time was passing. It basically, I looked down at the computer, I looked back up, and it was another day. It was uh, an experience, to say the least. But all that is to say that it is actually very, very engaging, or at least in my humble opinion. Now, let's jump into a new game, because no matter how excited I am to describe this game to you, it is always better to show than to describe. And we are immediately going to be uh, starting to see the uh, the similarities with with many games. To be fair, but again, the 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 inspiration from Rim Rimworld is, is worn loud and proud on this game sleeve. So we can start with standard. Our settlement would experience enemy raids and environmental events. Peaceful. There are no enemy attacks. Choose this game mode if you prefer to focus on constructing your settlement and take care of your settlers. Or survival. Enemy raids happen frequently in this mode, and their difficulty increases over time. You can further tailor the difficulty down here. Now, we're going to be starting on standard. Um, I initially played the game in normal uh, for my, my quick uh, romp through the tutorials just to get my, my footing that turned into like an entire night. Uh, but I would say that certainly as a, a, uh, a seasoned player of colony style games like this, normal does a good job of giving you a little bit of everything so you learn how to to walk through stuff how to do combat how to build your settlement it doesn't propose a particularly big challenge if you're already familiar with these sorts of games so we're going to be playing this on difficult and then we get the scenarios now you've got a new life each settler has a story about their past they're left behind but now this tattered group has a common goal to build a new home together. Recommended for first-time players. Start in spring, you get a lot of resources, a spattering of equipment, and uh, three settlers. You also have a lone wolf. The settler starts alone with meager resources in the harshest of conditions. Starts in winter. Winter in this game really isn't a joke. You don't want to uh, jump into this one until you're at least a little bit familiar with the game systems. Otherwise, you're probably going to just freeze to death or be eaten by wolves, one or the other. You can also immediately make your own scenarios and uh, add conditions. Again, there, there's, a, there's a lot of inspiration here, I imagine, from RimWorld, and it is very, very clear. But uh, it is all presented in a very, very good way. I, I certainly, as a, uh, as a uh, fan of RimWorld, find myself being a fan of this game almost by default. But we're going to be choosing a new life and three new settlers. Now, we get to choose from a randomly generated world, and three random positions on it. Uh, we get a, a name, we get some heraldry, which is actually pretty cool. We can design our heraldry. How much can we design here? 
Uh, okay, we've got a, we've got quite a lot of uh, design options actually. This is certainly interesting. Uh, or you can go to custom, apparently. Oh right, so you can have your own your own heraldry. That is all right. This is this is actually pretty good. I I like it a lot. I'm going to be honest. I, I do like it a lot. Uh, we're going to be going with the black flag. Uh, as for the pattern, um, I don't think that really really uh, matter too much since uh, it's black. Uh, so no, we'll 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 go with no pattern there. As for the symbol, hmm, yeah, sure. We'll we'll have. Should we go for the Blood Moon Coven sort of thing? Ah, I'm, I'm sort of I'm sort of feeling the Blood Moon Coven right now. Uh, as it happens, I am feeling the Blood Moon Coven. Let's scale that up a little bit. Uh, let's make the color a darker red. I guess we'll have to go with this. That's fine. The second symbol will be another but smaller uh, circle. And we'll have something like this, I think. And we can make this one black. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. And on the inside, we could perhaps have a moon. Uh, if we're going Blood Moon Coven, then this this moon should really be, be Blood Red, I think. Yeah, so we can rotate it, actually. That's actually pretty cool. Let's rotate it around in this direction. Uh, and then scale it down just a little bit. That being said, there's now a little bit too much red, so maybe maybe the blue instead. We'll, we'll, we'll be doing away with you, though. Uh, thank you. Uh, we, we don't need that there. Is there anything else we want? We could transform that, move it down a bit. Uh, we could have uh, an animus, perhaps. Uh, let's see. Are there any hexes? Well, I mean, it makes sense that there wouldn't be. This is this is kind of the the British medieval times uh, having a having a flag with obvious uh, obvious <laughs> hexes on it might be a little bit rough, but uh, nevertheless, there are some. So we'll go with the chicken's foot. Uh, all right. Well, do we want that to be a different color? Uh, we might be able to transform it, scale it around a little bit, uh, shrink it down, translate it. We've got, this is possibly one of the better, yeah, this is definitely one of the better um, heraldry designers that I have seen in any game. That is amazing. Uh, Wallsthrup. No. No. Um, we will be going with Woven Tales. There we go. We have drawn a name from the patron nameless. Thank you ever so much, Woven Tales, for your support. Woven Tales is a fantastic name for a settlement, I think. Well done, random name generator. You picked a good one this time. Uh, we are going to be, hmm, do we want to start in the valley, the hillside, or the mountain? You have three locations on every randomly generated uh, map seed. Uh, and, and as far as I've seen, there is always a valley, a hillside, and a mountain, <clears throat> which gives you a different kind of, uh, different sorts of abundance of resources. So lots of vegetation and, and probably creatures, uh, woodland, creatures and the like down on the valley probably uh, you know less of both with the hillside but st there's still an abundance um or rather there's still there's still plentiful i suppose um but you're starting to get more of the ores and then up the mountain you're going to have a, a an abundance of ores but you know vegetation is going to be a little bit more scarce let's go with the middle ground and go along the hillside the uh, the coven that shall make woven tales it's home i think that that's a particularly Fantastic name there. I like it. Uh, right, okay, well, uh, let's move on and see how this is going to shape up. We've got three characters. We've currently got Clement, uh, Radolf, and Ogden. Okay, not uh, moments later have we found three new colonists who have some better skills. Much like uh, most colony builders, to be honest, your initial colonists, you kind of need the right spread of abilities to, to stand a good chance. So we now have uh, Vinerick, Elizabeth, and Adam, and let's get to know them a little bit better. And here we go. Say hello to Russell, Dr. Lady Terra, which I, I can't can't help but think of Dr. Minis, Mrs. the Monarch at this point. And Belial, thank you ever so much for your support. Welcome to the colony. Now let's uh, find out a little bit more about you individually. Now, Russell is uh, has a bit of a passion for construction. Passion gives more EXP gain, and uh, very passionate gives a bit more besides, so 2.5 and 4 times uh, respectively. Uh, you're passionate about construction, very passionate about being a marksman. You're not very good at it yet, though. You're very passionate about medicine, and you are very good at it. And you've also got a bit of a passion for speechcraft. Beside that, though, you're not too bad at, at melee um, or at col uh, culinary. You are actually an okay cook. Perks, you're a hedonist. 
We are a bit of excitement. Russell quickly gets bored and starts causing trouble. Quite the drama queen. And a sun seeker. Russell comes alive when the sun is shining. A few golden rays is all it takes to bring out the best in him. Age 32. Weight 50 kilos. Height 181 centimeters. Uh, you are a devout restitutionist. Now, there are two religious faiths, uh, at least as far as I've seen, that your colonists can belong to. And whilst that does have different requirements for the building that they go to satisfy their religious observances, there isn't much interplay between the two faiths, despite the fact that they do seem to be at odds with one another. But we've got devout restitutionists. More may, may come as the, as the game gets further development. Uh, development. So uh, we may start seeing that colonies with, with rivaling religious representation within might start to have more trouble, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, this settler needs religious activities every few days. They require a church of, uh, sorry, a church of restitution, shrine, or chapel for their religious observance. Uh, you are a faithless barber. Need a close shave? When it was time to remove a troublesome beard or festering limb, Russell would merrily oblige. He loved his gossip almost as much as letting blood. Russell was often the first to know, and for many, the last they would see. In the wake of death and terror, the priest beseeched Russell to repair. Uh, Kincardine on Fourth Church, despite the sickly season. He watched gloomily as the congregation gradually expired, sneezing as they broke bread together and buried their brethren. God is dead, Russell thought. The game takes place in, in the aftermath of an apocalypse, basically a vast plague, so you'll see lots of reference to that. Pseudonym, the heretic of Kincardine on Fourth. Russell speaks of the God of Abraham and the mosques of the Moors, of sacred groves, lost scrolls and forbidden rites. Russell knows a bit too much for his own good. I see. Okay, you've got a bit of a uh, bit of history there. Let's find out about Dr. Lady Tara. Uh, double passion in speechcraft, marksman again, but you are actually a decent marksman. And you're passionate about botany, but really not very good at it yet. Uh, you've got some abilities in construction, though. You've got a little bit of in, uh, of ability in intellectual. That will come in very, very handy. You're also uh, a, a decent smith, despite not being particularly passionate about it. You are, however, a gobbler. The only way to preserve food is to eat it quickly. At least that's what Dr. Lady Tara thinks. And Somnolent, uh, sorry, Somnolent. Loves, uh, Dr. Lady Tara loves nothing better than a nice long snooze. In fact, she needs more sleep than most just to function. Very well. You are a chivalrous recruit. Dr. Lady Terra practiced when she could with the longbow, but plowing and reaping duties generally took precedence. No matter, Dr. Lady Terra was enlisted to fight in France, ending at the siege of Tournai. A string to her, uh, to her bow and a tail for the fireside. After the apocalypse, Dr. Lady Terra swooned over the histories of Sir Gawain and Sir Bedivere. To be so gallant, so merciful. Dr. Lady Terra thought she had the right qualities to be a knight, and those qualities were sorely needed in these savage days. Very well. And finally, oh, actually, uh, we need to check uh, again. Uh, you're a practicing restitutionist. The settler needs just an occasional quick prayer to satisfy their religious needs. They require a church of restitution, shrine, or chapel for their religious observance. So uh, we do have two people of the same faith. Let's find out. Oh, no, we don't. <laughs> we were not that lucky. Belial, you are passionate about construction. You're also quite good at it. You're also quite a good uh, carpenter. And you're, you're not, you've definitely got a green thumb, though you're not particularly keen on it. You are a passionate cook. Uh, you're also pa very passionate about medicine. Nice. And you know, get a dabbling. Well, again, you're not actually dabbling. You're, you're relatively a good smith. You just don't really care for it. It's not something you, you really go for. You're not the most. Um, let's let's just see that say that you can forge sharper blades than your brain is. Let's put it that way. Uh, perks wise, you're brawny. Belial is powerful and carries out tough jobs effortlessly. Well done. And also, you're benevolent. Belial is a ray of hope in an otherwise bleak existence. He makes everyone feel better. You're 45, you're 81 kilos and 169 centimeters. A stark contrast to Russell, who is 50 kilos and 181 centimeters. But you are an oak brethren zealot. This settler requires considerable religious activity to stay happy. They require an oak brethren shrine or temple for their religious observances. But you are a cheerful arrowsmith. 
tipped with blade or barbed, Belial had been turning out arrows' heads since he was fourteen. He sometimes wondered how many of his creations had found their mark, staining the ruddy battlefields of Slur uh, uh, sorry, Selice and Circe. In the wake of death and terror, Belial would whistle as he worked, almost as though the horrors of recent times had passed him by. Belial's reason to be cheery was simply enough. He had caught the pestilence, but had dodged the Grim Reaper. Life was good. Well done, Belial. A survivor. I like it. And with that, we now have all of our settlers. It's time to begin. Uh, so, we are going to be founding the settlement of Woven Tales. One zealous oak brethren and two restitutionists uh, who aren't particularly, you know, maybe they, they, they're like, look, just anything for a simple life, whatever, Belial, just you go do your, th uh, we're just going to do it. Uh, we don't care. Belial cares, though. Belial really cares. Standard difficulty, uh, or ra rather the standard setting on difficult difficulty, a new life, and we're going to be starting on the hillside. You know what? We'll allow for tutorial tips as well. And with that, <laughs> quite quite a many minutes into the video, look, okay, if if I don't spend at least one quarter of the video in character creation, it's, it's basically not one of my let's plays. You just need to get over there. Uh, nevertheless, I do hope that uh, this uh, this long preamble into the game was, uh, was worth looking at. I do think that uh, showcasing just how much replayability and how many settings you can set for any playthrough is actually quite important. But with that all said and done, it is time for us to finally embark a new life. The plague had ravaged the British Isles, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Untold millions went to an early grave, and those left standing were plunged into poverty, brutally scared by the horrors that they had witnessed. Nothing would ever be the same again. In the springtime of the year 1351, Russell, Dr. Lady Terror, and Belial set off into the wilderness to claim a piece of land as their own, as was their right, in the eyes of God and under the law. Here they may lay down the foundations for some kind of future, Perhaps hope will follow. Dr. Lady Terra is confident, defiant even. We will make this work. We will take our share of land. We will build here. And we will defend it. Many have tried. Some have fallen. Beset by bandits, defeated by droughts. Yet many have also prevailed. Have faith that the place we found will stand centuries from now. Our descendants will be there still. Into a landscape of rolling hills and ancient crumbling forts, the companions trekked. Each ascent to rewarded Belial with a view that stretched for many leagues. No enemy approach would go unseen, he thought. They built a camp that would, in time, become the settlement of woven tales. An excerpt from Liber Hermagadonim by the Venerable Favian, New Exeter, CA 1365. And here we go. Welcome. Welcome to Going Medieval. Please bear in mind that the game is under heavy development. <laughs> this means that the game will have some bugs and unfinished systems. You can consult the Almanac for help and tutorials. Camera controls, uh, pretty bog standard stuff there. World layers. Now, again, this world has Z layers. You can mine down, you can build up, you can build in mines, so on and so forth. It's actually really really fun and this is where i find the most comparison to be made with games like stonehearth uh, by the way temperature does respect building down so if you dig yourself a cellar it's going to be colder than the outside most of the time i mean you know they will well it'll always be colder but it sometimes cold will be relative depending on whether there's a heat wave and it's in summer uh game speed controls uh as with many things you can speed the game up or slow the game down all right okay now it will pop up a uh, tutorial message every time we look at a new system but uh, i am relatively confident at least in the early game for what it's worth so we will probably gloss over them if at any moment you want to pause though then please please do and read the text 
in its fullness. Uh, some of the text I will read, obviously. When it comes to flavour text, I like to read it for my own enjoyment, frankly. Uh, right, we can see around the world there are bunches of things. There are some sticks. They are forbidden right now, but we will probably unforbid them. We've got various things growing. We've got uh, a little ivy shrub there. We've got some herbs over here. That's uh, basically medicine. We've got some bone piles. We've got some uh, mushrooms. There will be red currants. Uh, we've got uh, grass and we may even see some barley rye around the place as well. Uh, we've got uh, animals as well. We've got a wolf over yonder. Uh, we've got different types of terrain, stony, uh, stony soil. Uh, we've actually got limestone. We've got mud, coal. There may even be... Uh, is this salt? Yes, there's some salt deposits we can just see right there. There will be some iron here and there, but though we might have to excavate to find that. Sometimes you'll find it on the surface a little bit, especially if you uh, if you have large uh, exposed uh, chunks of stone. But it doesn't look like there's any iron that I can quickly show you what it looks like. But to be honest, it looks a little bit like, uh, like salt. A bit of a, a darker, rusty red colour and not quite as reflective. Um, that they'll, uh, that uh, Once we see some, I'll actually probably show it to you, but uh, for now. And we may not even get to it in this episode. So again, if you are interested in seeing more of this by the time you get to the end of the episode, do let me know in the comments. But we have our possessions, all of them. We didn't even bring a bloody wagon, my lord. You need to learn from the dwarves. But we have some weapons, some food. Uh, the food will be kind of okay. It will last for a long time. Uh, however, it will decompose. And it's decomposing because of ground type. It's decaying because of ground type. Even if something is said, like like this, these packaged meals, I think they, they basically last more or less forever, practically speaking, they do. Um, or they've got their, a kind of like shelf life of in the years, I think. Um, however, they're going to take 16 days to completely decompose because they're just out and about. Um, right now, it's only decomposing because of ground type. So they don't care about being exposed to the elements. The wood pile here will dec decompose in a year. Uh, if we have a look, let me let me find... There we are. Something that's decomposing, decaying rather because of temperature as well. So this is a healing kit. Uh, the hay is just ground type. The books is just ground type. We've got... Uh, ale pile. How about the cabbages? There we go. Ground type temperature as well. Now this is rotting. Unlike many of the other items, it has a freshness as well as hit points. It will decompose when its hit points hit zero, but it will rot when its freshness hits zero. And it is important to mark the difference between those two things. Now, uh, right now, pretty much the whole map is, is safe for us. So I'm just going to click down here and going to make sure all layers are selected because otherwise you'll only be active on the layer that you start on. I'm going to say, allow everything. Everything the light touches is part of our kingdom. There we go. Now that has generated a ridiculous amount of hauling jobs for them. So uh, I have kind of made things worse for them in a little way. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, though, we're going to place down a stockpile zone. Nowhere to store resources up here. We've got a default stockpile, dumping stockpile, and warfare stockpile. Honestly, all stockpiles are the same. You can just change their settings. These are just set up with a couple of presets that makes the initial setup just that tiny bit easier. Uh, let's make a decent stockpile right there. I'm going to go in. I'm going to say, right, I want everything to be stored here. Except for waste. I don't want waste to be stored. Rotten meat, vegetable rot, or ash, they can go elsewhere. Um, later on, I mean, ash is probably going to be useful, but right now, not so. Uh, I don't want any animal bones to be stored either, nor do I want... Uh, well, actually, the carcasses can be stored there, that's fine. And then we'll we'll pop them somewhere better. Now, we got a bit of wood. And the very first thing... Do we have any sticks? Uh, doesn't look like we got any sticks, so we're actually going to want to grab some of those. But thankfully, this is Britain. The place is basically a forest with you know small small grassy glades here and there, and it all sits on top of a lump of coal that's floating in an ocean. That's basically Britain in a nutshell, so wood is not going to be a problem for us at all. Let's start off by uh, chopping down a bunch of trees, and we'll also chop down these ones as well as these ones. Now, this is going to generate a lot of jobs, and it's going to generate an awful lot of sticks as well, and the sticks are something that I want because they're a fairly cheap uh, floor source. Right now, we have very, very limited things that we can build. Now, the game has a lot of stuff that you can research and expand into, but uh, one of the things that I didn't notice early on was that 
whilst, yeah, I've got wooden floors, but there's different types of floors there. This isn't just a wooden floor, it's just that I've got wooden floors selected. They're, most things will have multiple types of stuff that you can make out of them, and as you discover and make new materials, like when you first discover limestone, you can make dry limestone walls. Once you discover um, uh, stone cutting, you can make limestone brick walls, and, and these lists will, the, the variants will populate over time. Worth checking that out where you can. Now, before we get down to that, we've got a lot of things. Uh, familiar uh, players of Dwarf Fortress and Rimworld will be extremely familiar with this. Uh, we need to set up job priority. So give me just a moment with the power of editing. This is going to take you seconds, and we're done. Right, so. A few things to, to point out. Most of these will be familiar for you, but if you aren't familiar with games like Rimworld or indeed Dwarf Fortress, tending is when you actually take care of someone else. Also, when you take someone and just lay them to bed, um, if they pass out, for example. Convalescence is when you rest because you're sick and need to heal. Hunting is, well, hunting. Construct is when you're building any kind of structure, not when you're, like, building a chair. Well, the chairs are structures in this case, but, for example, if uh, I told someone to make me a suit of armor, that's going to come under tailoring, not construction. Growing and harvesting. Growing is sowing crops. Harvesting is harvesting crops. Mining is digging into mountains and deforming the terrain. Cutting plants is this, when I tell them to chop a tree or harvest the plant manually. Ha uh, harvesting is when it's just, it's time for that crop to be brought in. And cutting plants is when I've said, yeah, go and chop that thing down, regardless of whether it's mature or what, just cut that plant. Cooking is, well, cooking. Crafting is no skilled work, like making bricks. You don't have a specific trade for making bricks. You do actually have a specific trade. You know, most games gloss over this, but brick making was a craft, a well-respected craft, I'll have you know. Uh, certainly brick laying is, uh, but then that would come to construction. Uh, smithing, uh, as you can imagine, smithy carpentry is working with, with woodwork, so uh, making wooden tools, uh, fletching, that kind of stuff, bowyery. Tailoring, anything to do with making clothing, whether it's armor or just clothing. Research. Uh, well, uh, researching, really. But research is handled a bit differently in this game from many games. You, you sort of have to have the research ready before you can buy the thing that you want to research. You basically write chronicles and, 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 and theses and documents, and then you spend those documents which you've now accumulated on whatever you want to research, rather than saying, I want to research this, and then someone starts working on that knowledge. Um, it's, that way is more of a credit system. You're saying, well, I want to eventually be able to do this, so uh, I'm buying it now, but we're going to do the research later. You don't actually get it until you've done the research, so it's not really credit. But it, it's kind of putting the, the cart before the horse, I guess. It's just a different way of doing it. You've already got to have done the the research before you can actually purchase uh, any of the items on the research tree in this game. Steward is a uh, well, basic task, like uh, locking doors, closing windows, and extinguishing torches. And yes, closing a window matters in this game. With it open, temperature can equalize between the two places. With it closed, it tries to insulate uh, the room from the outside. And hauling uh, your good old uh, clearing stuff up, uh, stuff up off the floor. Now, peeps, you got some jobs. So please get to them. Uh, for now, the, the main thing is getting down trees. Now, it's going to take them a little bit of time, so we're going to speed things up. Over here, we've got the uh, the date, the day in the, in the season. Uh, we've got the current hour and the temperature outside, as well as weather. Weather really, really matters. You can have all, all the, 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 the normal British weather patterns. Rain, rain, heavy rain, that is hail. Um snow um or other kind of, oh yes fire and brimstone there's that one too uh now and then apparently there's legend <laughs> but some parts of britain have this thing called sunny day i don't i don't believe it honestly but uh nevertheless no, actually we, we've got clear right now but uh understand that this game does tend to favor the rain because it's Britain, you're going to have more rainy effects than not. And when the winters come, the winters are cold. I mean, yes, I know, there's probably going to be someone from Norway saying, ha, 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 ha. But no, truly, uh, they, they can be a bit rough. Uh, at least within the game sense, they're a bit rough. People don't tend to deal so well with uh, with negative 30. Uh, that being said, 
uh, we should be able to get a a structure that'll help them deal with it before winter comes. We, that would be a big fail state if we hadn't managed to get there. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some sticks. We should have some wicker about. Uh, yeah, we've got some sticks there. And we're going to layer this area with a, with a wicker floor. That will help some of the items from decaying. Now, some of them will decay simply because they're outdoors, so we do want to try and deal with that as well. We want to build a wall. Now, uh, if we want to put a roof over this, and we do because the things that care about being outside will care, we are going to need to have a solid wall. But you only need it in two directions because the roof will be supported in primarily from the sides unless it's a very very funky roof uh, that this game doesn't support by the way you only need support from uh, from two of the walls you don't need four walls to support the roof uh let's see tutorial for bit allow we don't need to know about that but i will bring it up just for those of you who want to to pause and have a look but uh forbidding and allowing items is pretty much the same as uh, as most games that have that kind of mechanic now construction is actually pretty good you can uh, place down walls doors and windows as you go uh not enough beds well it's gonna be a while look i'm just trying to take care of the the stuff on the floor first come on now but we do have roofs we can have wicker roofs thatch roofs we've got some hay so uh we'll probably go with a uh, a hay roof you can also have uh wooden tiles uh, and later on as i mentioned as you gain access to different materials you'll be able to expand that now you can build the roof tile by tile should you wish to or you can let the game do it and for now we're just going to go with a thatched roof cottage in the hopes that we can lure a trog door to these uh, aisles so that we can slay and then eat them and inherit their power uh right we've got bones all over there i don't really want to be bringing bones down here so well it, the thing is if i set up a dumping stockpile in order to store the bones my silly peeps will will go off and uh, try and grab the bones and bring them back like uh like i will pat them on the head and say good job no you wasted time now whilst they're building this we can actually have a look at a couple of other things we've got the schedule over here which allows us to set when people should work when people should have uh, leisure time and when they can just choose for themselves generally speaking i like my peeps to kind of sleep somewhat uh, to, to have different bedtimes so that we we have uh, a more varied amount of activity throughout the day um that being said i'm not going to be so uh, aggressive as to have people wake up well actually waking, waking up around 4 a.m is decent enough uh, but i do feel that, that this much sleep is perhaps a little bit more than you need nevertheless i'll allow you to have six hours Ugh, frankly too good to you uh but let's put in some leisure time this is enforced leisure time um i will actually offset it a little bit though because i i just i just like someone to get up a little bit earlier generally speaking i would like a, a cook to be up earlier than anyone else so let's just have a quick glance who is going to be our cook it will be probably belial so belial you're going to get up even earlier than other people you are going to wake up at uh, at uh, around 4 a.m just to make sure that you get some some noms for everyone else and the the roof is going in there as for work uh, a good solid five hours of work there we go then a little bit of downtime as well in case they need to go and take care of any other um any other tasks and then we can fill this in as well three hours there to do what you want i i, I think spreading out leisure time is probably not a bad idea in this game because i think that's when they go and satisfy their religious needs so uh, we'll probably do something like this you'll have a little bit of time in there just in case you absolutely like you skipped breakfast there's a time two hours for you to go and get get some uh, some food in your belly but uh, we will enforce that uh, they do take some time out to satisfy their religious requirements otherwise they will get upset now in here we should see that most things are now no longer decaying however food still will because of temperature but it's no longer decaying faster because of the floor and the packaged meals will now last us indefinitely as with our simple healing kits etc uh, etc et this is nowhere near enough storage by the way but it is good enough uh, it does it isn't considered outside as long as it's got a roof so just having the walls like that 
has sheltered this, even though obviously the wind can just blow through here. It's mostly worried about about you having uh, things like uh, like rain and uh, weather interacting with it in a much more direct way. Uh, we can give people orders, as we've already been doing, for chopping down trees and the likes. But uh, the next thing that we're going to want to do is probably take care of some beds. Now, I can just make them a spot on the floor to sleep. They're not going to like it. But as a precaution to us not being able to get anything better, let's give them three hay beds right there. But I'm going to try and pop together a room nice and quickly. Now, they are okay with sleeping in a group. Um, I mean, they're founding a town together, so one would hope that they get on. Uh, but it is better to give them personal beds, or at the very least, rooms that are only bedrooms. You can put all sorts of things in a bedroom, and if we look up here, this game has uh, something kind of similar to uh, which was uh, the game, the Dragon Quest Builders, in a way. But depending on the, the things that you put in a room, it defines what that room's purpose is, and the game cares about that. So whilst I could put a, a cook stove in the bedroom, and they would use the cook stove, and they would use the beds, but it's no longer a bedroom, and it's not a kitchen either. It's just a room that happens to have things in it. And this is something that is true of all the uh of all types of rooms now i'm not sure that we can even make a shared bedroom right now because i think we've got to have at least two wooden hay beds or no or hay sleeping spots so we would be able to do that but what about a bedroom huh okay we can actually have a bedroom that is just a sleeping spot so we may actually be able to do that but right now just to conserve resources i'm going to aim to make them a bit more of a barrack uh let's have the barracks out here it doesn't need to be too large especially for hay beds uh, that said, uh, well, actually, sure. Let, let's let's try and keep it small, so just so that it takes them less time to make it. So if we if we then cancel these ideas that I had over here, uh, it was uh, a bit premature. Let's pop the hey sleeping spots in here, just so that I can see the dimensions that I'm going to need this room to be. And then we're going to place down some more walls, one there. We'll draw this in. It doesn't need to be much. Having some heating in here, though, would be useful. And let's be realistic. These are hay beds. Don't put the torches next to the hay beds, please. Uh, we will have a window. And you know what? Let's be fancy. We're not just going to even have a single door. We're going to have a double door, just so that I can uh, demonstrate. But the doors, you can see the way they're going to open, which is honestly an amazing quality. But... When you put two doors together, they do actually function as a double door. And I like that. I like that a lot. We'll pop in a little wooden window as well. We'll pop it there. Um, do we want some more windows? Uh, sure, we can replace these with little wooden windows there and there. There we are. Now, we're going to leave the windows closed for the most part, just to uh, conserve on uh, on heat. Uh, do we want a, a brazier or a torch? Now, different uh, items will output different amounts of heat, different sorts of light. A torch only takes five wood. They don't have to refuel it. Once you've built it, you've built it. Uh, that might change in the in the future. You can have them on walls as well. There's a variant there. Uh, it'll output 150 heat, whereas a clay brazier will output 1,800. Requires 10 clay, though, but I think we can make that happen. We should have some clay just dotted around. In fact, we've already got some clay there. Yes, we've got a decent amount of clay, so there's no reason not to. Uh, but as this is going to be a bit more of a of uh, of a living spot, let's go for something. Do we want a wick, wicker roof? How many sticks have we got? We've got twenty seven sticks, but we've got five hundred and eighty three wood. So I could go all the way up to a wooden roof. Oh, how fancy! Eh? How fancy! We'll rotate it so that it's uh, facing the right way. I love that the roofs overhang. <laughs> the amount there are so many uh, building games, so many like voxel building games and stuff like that where you build a roof and it just goes straight from the wall to the roof. There's no overhang. The amount of the amount of hoops you have to jump through to to create that is so annoying. But you can click on hide roofs. It makes building a lot easier. Let's just leave it a lot. But it, oh. Trying to build through roofs is a problem. Now, th that is a problem that I am going to say is unfortunately present if you just build a floor. If you build a multi-story building, you have to cycle through the Z-levels. If you pay attention up here, I'm cycling by holding down control and using the mouse wheel. And you'll see it once we get down. There we go. You can have, like, the half floors there as well. It's actually quite cool. But uh, this should, I'm hopeful, 
make them a, a little shared bedroom, which will give them a bit of a benefit. If we have a look over here, um, so we look in bedroom there, a rare private space, a haven to rest in solitude and to dream and wake alone in peace. It's going to have to be a little while before we get there. You're going to have a shared room, a communal room where many lay down their heads to rest. There is warmth and comfort, but also occasional loud snoring and bad smells. Well, I, how rude. Look, we all know it happens. You don't need to point it out. My goodness. All right, okay, so uh, we're going to continue to chop down things. So how much food have we got? We have not actually got much in the way of food. Well, that's, that's a lot. We've got some packaged meals. Now, you can, if you want to, combine items uh, in the resource zone. So all food is shown in there. I find this zo this view much better than the expanded view. Early on, it's not much of a muchness, honestly, because everything is kind of all over the place. And uh, you haven't got enough separate items that it really is going to fill up the screen. But after a little bit of time, you're going to get to a point where you've got so many different items that might be, be shown that this list becomes ungainly. Now, beyond the schedule, you've got the management screen. Once again, a tutorial, we can manage all of this. Uh, we can manage what they're equipped with, what they, they wear, whether armor or, or what, what kind of headgear, what kind of food, what kind of stimulants. Uh, in this case, you know what? I always, I always kind of make a bit of a joke when, when a game calls something a stimulant, when uh, we all kind of know what it really is, just so that they can uh, avoid certain problems. But... As a YouTuber, I have come to have a different kind of appreciation for the, the hoops you have to jump through so that you don't uh, don't go broke. So I'm going to give you a buy. Also, in this game, the stimulants literally are wine, ale, and beer. That, that's probably the least egregious use of stimulant in instead of a different word that I've seen in any game. So I'm, I'm going to give you two buys. Two buys for the price of one. Well done. Uh, hopefully we can finish this off before they go to bed because that will actually give them a, a much better mood in the morning. But we've got all sorts of things down here. We can draft them from here. I can change their stance depending on if they see an enemy, whether they'll just charge in. Um, and I love the fact that you can hover over their faces on any screen and get a quick look at their abilities. Like, you want to be a marksman, but you're a decent melee combatant. You are a very good marksman, so you are absolutely going to have a bow. Please equip. Belial, um, much of a muchness really with Belial, so I guess, how many bows did we have? We have two bows, well since you want to be a marksman, you can grab that, and Belial, you will have, uh, I think we've got, what kind of weapon have we got? We do have a sword, we also have a wooden spear, 3.663 PS versus the swords, 5, well okay, then straight up sword and board, and you can have the shield. Now, you'll notice that I can change this in the edit screen. Uh, but, have you finished this? Oh, you're so close. You're so close to finishing. We just need this roof, I think. We'll, we'll finish it, actually. But if we can get that done, that would be amazing. Come on, Bilal. Let's finish things off. Uh oh settlers are exhausted. Don't worry. Don't worry, Dr. Lady Terra. The bedroom's almost done. There we go. Shared bedroom. You can now go to bed whenever you want. It's warm, too. Outside is... Really? Bilal? Are you tired? Well, I'll maybe a little bit, little bit on the tired side. It's currently 3.9 degrees outside, but inside it's a roasty toasty 22. I would actually melt in that kind of temperature. Abex were not built <laughs> for warmth. We were built for the harsh colds of the uh, blizzard in which we were born. Uh, we were not designed, designed for, for warm quarters. We are far too hot. Our body is hot enough. We, we, uh, I, I'm fairly certain that my evolutionary path was set when I was born based on the environment around me and I was born to d develop my own heat because I couldn't rely on the environment to give me any. The sound side is when it does, I am far, far too hot. Uh, there we go. Now, giving them a table to eat, it's all, also quite nice. Uh, you really should be going to bed though, I would have thought. Oh no, Dr. Lady Tara goes to bed at midnight. I'm sorry, Dr. Lady Terra. I know it sucks to be tired. Uh, you can check down here. Their mood. Losing consciousness. Uh, well, maybe you should go back to bed then. Look, it's going to turn over very soon. So I'm actually going to force this. Can I tell you to go to bed? 
No, but I can send you back. You're drafted, go back. As soon as this turns to midnight. Now, what I shouldn't have done is changed all of this early. It's best to make small changes over time. Come on, midnight. Sweet, sweet witching hour, please. Come yeah, on. Go to bed. No, you're going to wander off. You're going to grab some more something. Talk to Lady Terra. Come on. Please. Hour. Switch over. There we go. Talk to Lady Terra. Bedtime. There we go. Oh, my lord. That was a, that was a potch. I was much more of a potch than it needed to be. Uh, settlers are exhausted. Yes. It'll, they'll get out of their system. Don't worry. As you can see, the various thresholds for when uh, things get rough for them. So, uh, exhausted down here. Uh, sleep amount of sleep a settler has had. If it reaches zero, the settler will faint. Uh, exhausted at 10%. Tired at 20. Competent at 30. Well rested at 90 and very well rested at 100. And this is true for almost everything. Uh, alcohol requirement satisfied. No need for alcohol. Slightly lacking. Lacking deprived. Uh, there, there's, a certain, there's a certain degree of dwarfishness about this. It's like, we need drinks to survive. Well, obviously we do. What drinks should we have? Beer. Re only beer? Well, ale? Only beer? Look, I'll, I'll settle for a rough wine. If I have to. In a pinch. What about water? Water? Are you mad? I'd die. Which, uh, you know, depending on which historical text you read, may have been closer to the truth than not. It really wasn't. <laughs> it really wasn't. But uh, nevertheless, they, they, you know, preparing your water into, like, half beer, which was basically so weak it was practically non-alcoholic, was genuinely much safer than just drinking the water. Um... Lacking religious activities. That's going to be a bit of a problem. We will get there. Though we will get there. Notice that there is no, ah, I ate without a table. That is simply a, I ate with a table. That's nice. It, it's not so much, oh my lord, I was forced to eat standing up. I'm just going to have to kill my friend to try and get over this trauma. It is a more of a case of, ah, oh, that's nice. I have creature comforts. I get to eat with a table. Life is good. I, I approve of that. It's still it's still rewarding certain behavior, but not not massively penalizing uh, other behavior in a stupid way. Next up, we are going to want somewhere for our for our peeps to uh, to satisfy their religious uh, the religious requirements. Also, we kind of want a room where they can just eat. Honestly, we do want a place with a table uh, where we set this up. Uh, you know, well, I'll, I'll allow time to pass, but. Hmm, how much wood have we got? we probably got loads still. Yeah, we've got more than enough, so let's get to work on this. And also, have a bit of a think of, of defensiveness. How do I want to defend this area? Uh, a little little wall around here would not be difficult for me to manage. Uh, how about we build a general purpose building with some religious buildings besides? Now, a, a keen, keen point to make here. Do not force people to walk through religious buildings that they don't uh, practice the religion of. That is a big no. Uh, an ultra big no, actually. They will not thank you for that. In fact, they may even rise up in rebellion. No, they, I, I've, I've not seen any kind of... Uh, any, any extreme responses like that, like rebellion. But they really won't be happy with you. So uh, try not to. Uh, I'm going to have a window here. I think. Uh, just one window will do for now. Uh, we will have a shrine in here as well. Let's let's go and get ourselves a shrine. Now, we've got two restitutionists, so I'll pop that in. Now, this isn't going to make a, a good room just yet. We've, we're going to have a Church of Restitution Chapel. Uh, or rather, we're going to have the building, but we're not going to be able to make the chapel because we can't yet make the wall decorations, but that will come in time. We'll have a little door. It doesn't need to be much. There we are. However, the rest of this room, we are going to want this one to have a bit of a, a larger area. And I'm going to make a, a nice doorway coming in to this one. Uh, well, actually, let's, let's slide that over a little bit more. In fact, we're just, mm, I'm not a big fan of just having square boxy rooms. I'm really not. But at the same time, it's a lot easier to build, I'm going to be honest. Uh, let's do something like this. That way, this is now the center point. Sure, that'll do. Let's do that. We'll have a, a double door leading in. Now, there are no, uh, as far as I've been able to tell, there's no way of making nice kind of curved or angled edges, even though there are slopes in the game. Let me go and find one there, for example. Um, 
this is as good as you can with walls. They're always at right angles, basically. Uh, this does allow for, you know, decent insulation, though. Um, if you have the walls like this, I think they're a little bit less insulated. That being said, it does look a lot better in this instance. So we're, uh, we're going to throw caution to the wind. You're just going to have to be cold in, in the name of aesthetics. I know, I know, it sucks, but uh, just think, aesthetics. Right, let's continue. You can copy um, things from down here as well. That actually makes building a lot easier. Uh, something like this. And then we want a similar room on this side. So we want four internal. And then we'll have a little window there. And then the, uh, the shrine over on this side. And that should give uh, extremely zealous Belial somewhere nice to pray. There we go. And this does really matter. Uh, especially in Belial's case, it matters quite a lot. Uh, we're going to want this like so, so the, the uh, door handle is on the right, uh, same place. Inside, we can do fancy things, like putting down a table. Now, right now, we haven't got much of, uh, much of a room, so we might want to go with a uh, more humble table. Uh, something like this might work. We could definitely do that. Uh, likewise, we're going to want some space for having uh, maybe some recreational items, uh, a bit of backgammon. Currently, that's the only uh, type of recreation that they have, as far as I've seen, anyway. Uh, we could have two backgammon tables, but we just straight up don't need that yet. Mm. I'm sort of feeling that maybe I could adjust this a little bit better. If we sunk this room back even further, this, this, this is the problem. Whenever you start designing rooms in games like this, you, you're at risk of potentially ending up spending way too many resources on a room that you really don't need to be that big. And I am especially vulnerable to this particular problem. Uh, nevertheless, we're going to just go with it. Uh, we'll have two backgammon tables just because symmetry. And I guess at this point we will actually install those walls there. There we are. Now, this does give us an opportunity to place down two braziers in here, and we're probably going to need two braziers to warm this room. As for these rooms, I think we're just going to have wall torches. Let's go with torches either side of the shrines. Two braziers, will, and, and their position here will provide more than enough light. Uh, let's replace some of the walls, though, with windows. So one there, one there. And we could even have a window kind of snuck in there and there as well. And if we do that, then I may well go ahead and make this more of a square shape just to justify that window being in that position. I think that looks quite nice. We've got room for further decorations in the future as well, if we want them. But I think that's okay. We, we can always block this out a little bit more if I need to. Now, the problem with a, a room of this shape is it's going to make building a roof a little bit more of a tricky proposition. But first and foremost, we want these rooms covered. Uh, further to that, I'm going to say... Hmm, we could... There's no way of building half roofs, sadly, or, or half blocks to, to make a, a more traditional shape to a roof. We could do this and then have a shorter roof in here. It's gonna look it's gonna look all kinds of squiff. I'm not sure I'm prepared for the way this is gonna look. Let's put that oh my lord. Uh, I think we may need to <laughs> redesign this because that, that I can't abide by it, no. Uh, it cannot be a bit and buy. We could possibly design this roof uh, separately and, and painstakingly tile by tile. And I may have to go that route just because I'm so finicky about such things. But the first things first, let's just get the, the actual shape put down. Uh, right now we can only make stools, so let's pop in some stools. There we go. That'll do. Uh, in fact, if, if I want people to be able to walk back there... 
Well, they will be able to walk back there regardless, so that's not too much of an issue. Uh, the other thing I could do, actually... Hmm, I'm thinking about it. This may may actually be my, my saviour. You could do something along these lines. Pop down some further fortifications here, 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 and here. If I make a floor across these tiles, I'll be able to use it as a a point to make a roof. Same over there, same over there. I should be able to build a roof up off that. It'll it'll give an odd look, but nevertheless, I'll be happy with it. It'll be a lot uh, a lot less awful than it could be. Now, one of the interesting things with this is it does have structural stability. Any game with, with Z levels, you're kind of flipping a coin, really, on whether they're going to decide to try and implement any kind of structural, structural stability or not. But this game absolutely does. And the way it works is any tile connected to the ground, so these walls, for example, it'll say stability of four. Always starts at four. Every tile that builds off that without direct vertical connection. So it can it can transfer that stability infinitely upwards. So if I were to build just a massive tall column of wood, the, the, the tile right at the top, the highest Z level, would still be stability four because it's got a direct connection to solid ground directly beneath it. But I could build outwards from it without supporting underneath. So for example, in this case, it would be something like, uh, let me just quickly give you uh, an example. It would be something like this. That tile there will have a stability of three. If I built out another one, a stability of two, another one, stability of one, Beyond that, I can't place it. It has to have at least a stability of uh, a positive stability, otherwise it can't be built. So that's the way that this game has decided to implement uh, structural stability. Uh, and honestly, it works quite well. Uh, for the most part, I, I've not, not seen any, any instance where that has been an issue. Now, uh, that's actually going to be quite nice. We can maybe plant some shrubberies in there, maybe some red currant bushes or, or something along those lines. Might be quite uh, good. You can have the uh, time controls up the top there. Uh, meal preparation missing. Yeah, I know. That's a problem, isn't it? Um, maybe I could put some meal preparation in here. No, I think that would be, be a little bit uh, out of the way. Instead, what we're going to do is we are going to build a campfire right about here. Uh, well, actually, we, we can pop it on this side instead. Pot a campfire there. We'll also pop down a butchering table. Now, the butchering table will not have uh, a problem being outside, but it will not benefit from any kind of room bonuses. And I think there will be... You can still use it, but it'll, it'll have a slight uh, speed penalty based on the on, on it being outside, especially if there's any kind of inclement weather. Here we are. But I'll try and just seal that room away so he never has to bloody look at that shrine. Dr. Lady Tara, however, enjoying the fact that she can observe her religious traditions. Yeah, we've got some backgammon up and running, so people will be able to enjoy those. Now, we will place down floors once we have a chance, but right now, actually getting the walls and the functional um, components in place is a little bit more important, I would say. Now, have we built these? No. And we are not going to be able to build that for a little while. We're actually shy on the required amount of wood, so time for us to chop some more trees. We are gonna go through trees rather aggressively early on. Uh, later on, we can research agriculture, and from agriculture, we will be able to produce uh, tree farms, not just uh, not just crops. So uh, that will take care of our needs in that regard. Now, it is mentioned there that we don't have a research table, and until we get a research table, we can't even click on research. Uh, so I may actually go ahead and build one just so that I can showcase how all of that is going to go down because I do notice the time. And uh, <laughs> as I knew I would, we are rapidly approaching the point where I'm going to have to wrap up the, this video. And I, I've covered uh, not nearly enough, in my opinion. I, wa I want to show more. This game is so good. Uh, where do I want to pop this? So You know what? For the time being, I just pop it there. It's not in a good place, but it'll allow us to at least open up the research screen so I can show that to you. Uh, yes, yes, yes. We've got many, many things that we need to uh, chop trees down for. But I'm glad that they are stopping to build it. In my mind, that tells me that uh, I've got the, the priorities right. They gather the wood and then they use the wood. They, instead of just sitting there gathering. I mean, some people are because they've got slightly higher priorities with that sort of thing. But where possible, they will they will 
prioritize getting something functional out of the wood rather than just letting it sit on the floor, potentially deteriorating. And there we are. We've almost finished the uh, the shrine room for the restitution. I still be happy. Bilal's probably like, ugh. Now, actually, right now, Bilal doesn't mind being in there because it isn't a shrine. It doesn't count as a Church of Restitution chapel yet. If it did, Bilal would have a significant negative um, mood penalty from just being in that room. Um, and, and I can only imagine that would be worse because of how devote he is to his uh, to the uh, Oak Brethren. Uh, however, uh, it, the same is exactly true of uh, those who follow res uh, the Church of Restitution. They do not like being in an Oak Brethren temple for the same reasons. Now, we have got enough books to be able to research a little bit of, of stuff, but uh, right now it looks like our peeps are in a better mood than they were before. I'm actually quite quite happy with that. Uh, right now, I'm allowing them to wear any apparel. You know what? I'll also allow you to wear any headgear as well, so uh, you can pop that on whenever you can. And mm, do we have armor? We do have some armor. I would prefer that uh, all armor go to Bilal. Bilal will put on any armor that's available. Now, interestingly, I noticed that we have some of the... Uh, the settings that I made in my tutorial. Light armor wasn't there before. Light armor here, and much like you'll be familiar in RimWorld, this uh, allows you to say at what point they're allowed to put something on. And uh, let me just double check what I had all armor on. In fact, I could have done that in a different way, but just going in there. Yeah, it's 60 upwards. Uh, by default, the game doesn't have that, so they'll put on anything. Something that's literally threadbare and about to fall off them, they'll just plonk it on like 1% hit points. But right now, I've told them not to do that, and I prefer them to uh, to only put it on if it's got a reasonable amount of hit points left. And light armor restricts the armor that they'll select to leather and wood uh, sorry, and uh, wood armor only. I guess I could allow Gamberson as well. But uh, all armor, because the, the way I, I was thinking about it is that realistically, my archers only need light armor, uh, whereas my warriors really just need any armor. Because, it, you know, I don't want them to turn up their nose and, oh, well, it's not plate mail. I'm not going to put this on. You're literally going to be in the middle of a fight being stabbed. If it's armor, wear it. <laughs> Don't be picky, but generally choose the best armor you can. I mean, that's that's where I would like them to be with that. But uh, we have now got finally somewhere for Belial to uh, to uh, have uh, his religious needs fulfilled. Now, Belial will need to do that regularly, like probably every day, maybe even several times a day. Uh, whereas the others, based on their their relative level of religious uh, fervor not going to be as much of a concern. Uh, you'll only need it every few days, whereas Dr. Lady Terra, even less. Uh, just an occasional quick prayer now and then is good enough. Uh, mood. Mood represents your settler's happiness. Be sure to check on your settler's mood often. Uh, and indeed, that is important. Have we finished things over here? No. We're still waiting on building this. I, I love the detail here. Look in there and you can, although it's uh, perhaps a little bit hard to see there because of the... Uh, the reflections, but there are actually puddles forming on the ground, which is actually quite nice. I like it. Uh, but we have almost finished now with the churches. Hopefully we can get this this done. I can prioritize things, but as with many games, I actually just like letting the uh, the settlers build things in their, own, in their own way. But now we have a research bench. Uh, we get the tutorial for how to set up bills and production on here. Now, here... As I mentioned, you get the research and then you can spend it rather than choosing what to spend it on and then researching into that thing. You actually make books. Now, there is something very important about books. Books don't go away. You don't spend them and they disappear. You, For example, for a chronicle, you... Uh, it, let me see the chronicle itself. Do you want to give me the information about it? No, let me actually click on a chronicle then. Uh, there. So, the description of a chronicle. Simple tales and facts laid down on skin. You can then go on later to make make books uh, and thesis and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but a chronicle is a physical object. Once we've spent it on research, that chronicle doesn't go away. That's how we know how to build the thing. Someone wrote it down in a book, and when we want to build another one of those things, we have to read the book to, to be able to understand it. They can be stolen. They can rot away. If they rot away, thankfully you 
don't, as far as I'm aware, you don't lose access to the uh, the ability. Let's have a look. Uh, unlock research items. Uh, our products research table. Various forms of knowledge. It doesn't mention having them destroyed the stone would disable unlocking new research. So you, if if I've learned, for example, architecture costs fifteen. It'll allow me to build wooden beams, which will help us with structural stability. I'll unlock it for fifteen. There we go. So now I've only got ten, but I've allocated fifteen. If for some reason 15 of those books got got lost, that would leave me um, with 10. Those 10 would immediately become allocated. They'd no longer be available to me. And I would furthermore have to rewrite five more books before I could even start accumulating books to use on other researches. So you do actually need to protect your research. It's not just a, a thing that people hold in their heads. It's something they wrote down. And if you lose it, you need to replace it before you can unlock new things. And I actually found that really, really good. But while we're finishing off uh, some of the buildings, let's have a look at the research tree. So we've got agriculture, it allows you to build all types of farms. Clay brick making, make kilns. You can uh, also make coal. Uh, from wood, I imagine, just uh, you know, in, in a charcoal kiln. Stone brick uh, block cutting, smelting, allows you to build smelters. You can, in almost every type of workbench, recycle. And this was really good. You can re melt down any metal weapons or metal arms. You can recycle uh, leather or, or, or linen cloth into the, the clothing materials. Um, you can break wooden things down into wooden sticks. Uh, wooden weaponry down here, you get the bowyer, the, the wood turner's table, um, flails, spears, so on and so forth. Uh, better defensive structures, you can make wooden traps, um, wooden doors. We can already make some traps, spike traps and uh, wooden merlons. Uh, we've got pres preserving food, we can make uh, metal smoking, uh, brewing. We can make the blessed, blessed alcohol that keeps our dwarves, I mean settlers, getting through each day without slowly descending into chaos. Uh, armorer, make armor cooking, better meals. We can make lavish meals which require more resources but are much more nutritious and, and uh, they lift people's spirits. Better bows all the way up to crossbows, swords, maces, axes, all sorts of things. Blacksmithing which allows us to make mechanical components which are required for making things like metal traps. Um, you will need metal for some of the uh, different um, buildings. Research. You can continue to research and it allows you to research new types of things like the textbooks there and the thesis. Uh, different, uh, different researches require different expenditure of books. Some will just require chronicles, others will require chronicles and, and textbooks and indeed thesis, distilling, um, plate armor, better shields, uh, chemistry for healing. So on and so forth. Now, I'm not sure if uh, this is going to continue to expand, but you will be playing this for hours before you even start to, to get deep into this tree. So there's still a lot of, of researching to be done, but I can I can certainly imagine that this is going to be uh, going to be greatly expanded in the future. But I'm afraid with that, we really, really have run all out of time. I know I would like to show you more, but if you are interested in seeing more, then do let me know with a comment or a like on the video and we may see this first taste turn into something a little bit more long lasting. But uh, that is going to be it from me. I hope you enjoyed. I hope to see you next time. But until then, and as always, from Belial, Dr. Lady Terra, and Russell, and of course me. Do take care everyone.